With drought stress forages in parts of the state and lower corn prices, Nebraska Extension's Aaron Berger says it might be worthwhile for producers to weigh the potential return of using corn as silage versus harvesting the crop as grain. Aaron is based in Kimball in the state's southwestern panhandle, but he joined us in the R.B. Warren Arena on UNL's East Campus this week to discuss how to determine the right fit for your operation. So as we look at Nebraska right now, we've kind of had an interesting summer. We've had some moisture early, then it really dried out. That's impacted some of the forage availability in terms of grass production and then subsequent hay production. So when we look at the price of hay today and we look at the value of corn, there starts to be some kind of comp com competition, I would say, for utilizing that as a feed resource. So as we think about corn silage, that can obviously be an energy and a forage kind of base that we could use in a ration. So it starts to really become interesting to look at that, especially where we look at $3 corn in Nebraska right now and would that fit in a operation in terms of a forage resource. So tell me how you would price this as a silage if it were just standing out in the field right now. So a good rule of thumb, uh, Dr. Galen Erickson's done some good work looking at how do we value corn in the field and a good rule of thumb at this point is take 7.65 times a bushel price and that's pricing it in the field on a wet ton basis. Of course we've got harvest expense involved with that so if we figure ten dollars per ton to get it from the field to the bunker uh, we're looking at around $35, $33 per ton. Add some storage expense, probably $2 a ton. And then we need to think about shrink. When we put silage in the bunker, we're going to have shrink in that. Probably 15% is a good target number. So now we're down in the low 40s in terms of it coming out of the bunker into the feed bunk for the cattle. Are there any other values, such as the value of manure, that you need to factor in with that? Yeah, we really do. We need to think about the whole system. So the value of the manure that comes from the corn silage we harvested, applying that as a credit back to the field, uh, realizing that we have some options if we put up corn silage. We could go back and plant a crop for this fall and winter, early spring, provide some additional feed. So we need to think about the whole system as we evaluate this as an option. If you're putting that in the bunker, how long are you able to leave that in there, Aaron? So we want to let that ferment for at least probably four weeks. That's where we really get the best quality silage. Uh, once we get it in the bunker, if we get it good and sealed, and that's really important to get a good uh, seal on that to protect that silage, that will really help reduce shrink loss. Uh, you know, we can really keep it indefinitely. It's really oxygen that starts to be detrimental to its keeping quality. So with that, is testing necessary? Yeah, I really think we'd want to test that silage after it's went through the fermentation process. Uh, once we start to get into the pile, getting it off the face, getting a nice sample representative of what we think is there, can really be helpful as we think about that as part of our ration as a whole. So what about the, uh, the drought stressed corn that might be out there? Are there any special considerations that producers need to know about that? So as we think about drought stressed corn, I think first you really need to think about what's the impact of that to my whole agronomic system. Uh, what am I planning to do with that? Am I going to have some cover on that over the winter? And what's the subsequent cropping impact? How much yield do I really expect to get? Because obviously there's some kind of overhead cost with chopping silage and we need to think about what's my cost per ton going to be in harvesting that? And is it really worth it? And then I think also as we look at these feed options, just comparing to them, what are my alternatives and does it really work for me? Nitrate considerations that you're concerned about? Yeah, so if we have a nitrate issue, one of the nice things about insiling is that we'll reduce nitrates by about 50%. If we think we have a nitrate issue, lifting the cutter bar as we go through that field will leave more of that nitrate in the field as nitrate tends to be concentrated in the bottom third of the stem. 